Everything that we've done so far has been more or less a review of things. Uh, right now, we are, are moving on to something that is new. Um, specifically, we're going to be looking at rotational quantities. So, we're moving into part of what makes AP Physics C a little bit tougher than pre AP and a little bit tougher than Physics B. We're looking at rotation. So, instead of looking at quantities like position or velocity, or acceleration, we're going to be looking at their equivalents uh, when we go around in a circle. So let's see here. Red. <clears throat> if we were to imagine moving from here along the circle over to here, that represents a distance of x. Now, if we are to look at our circle like we look at circles, we would have swept out while we did that motion, a pie piece, more or less. And that pie piece has an angle associated with it, theta. Now, there's a relationship between x and this angle theta. And if you think back, oh, I don't know, maybe to Algebra 2. I don't really know when you would have learned this at all. Uh, when you think back, it's the arc length formula. With your arc length formula, you said your arc length s, I don't know how to say it these days, was equal to the radius times the angle. Well, we're going to do that here, but instead of using s like that, we're going to use x for our position, is equal to r, the radius of my circle, times the angle that we sweep out. Now, the nice thing about talking in terms of the angle instead of talking about in terms of x is that x only applies, this distance x only applies when I'm this distance r away. If I have a smaller concentric circle on the inside, well that's not concentric at all, but with a different radius, I would have to figure out a different x based on that, where uh, the angle is still the same. So for us, we're going to be moving into theta. So when we're talking about angular quantities, when we're talking about rotational quantities, um, the first one that we're going to talk about, instead of, let's see its position over here, uh, over here, it's going to be angle what angle we swept out. The arc length is the position, the angle is the angle theta that we sweep out in radians. So uh, this angle theta is going to be equal to x, our position, divided by radius. And we'll look at an, an example here in a second. So, or another way that we could write it is x equals r theta. That's how we usually write that. Now, <clears throat> the next thing we're going to talk about is velocity. And velocity, if we remember, velocity was delta x over delta t. So if we plug in what we have for x up there, radius times the angle that we sweep out over time, we're going to get our new quantity. And just like x over time was velocity, we're going to say that this theta over time piece is equal to angular speed um, denoted by an omega. the lowercase Greek letter omega. And the lowercase Greek letter omega is for angular velocity. It tells me how quickly the angle is changing or the rate of change of my angle with respect to time. So this omega thing 
is going to be um, velocity divided by the radius, or another way to say it is that the velocity is equal to um, r omega. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to have is acceleration. We do the same thing, we divide by time again, but instead of talking about acceleration, we're going to talk about alpha, which is angular acceleration. Alpha is equal to regular acceleration divided by radius because of all this stuff, and xv acceleration is equal to r times alpha. Now we'll be using these interchangeably but we're going to look at when and how we would use this so let's say we have a bicycle wheel and that's close enough it's a little flat and let's say that this bicycle wheel the center of the bicycle wheel is rolling with a velocity of 10 meters per second and to make things easy let's say that this bicycle wheel as a radius equal to half a meter. Now, as this bicycle wheel rolls, we're going to be very specific and say that it rolls without slipping. Sorry, I had a little trouble writing slipping. This bicycle wheel is going to roll without slipping. <clears throat> now what that means is that all the relationships that we just talked about are true. Um, position x is going to be equal to r times the angle theta. Velocity is going to be equal to r times the angular speed omega. And acceleration is going to be equal to r times alpha. So looking at this, as the wheel rolls at 10 meters per second, <laughs> So the velocity is 10 meters per second. Let's just look at a time of 2 seconds. If that's the case, my delta x is going to be 20 meters. <clears throat> now, if I want to know how many turns the wheel has made, I can't look I can't look at linear quantities like position anymore. I have to look at something like theta in order to figure it out. Now, we can get to theta a couple of different ways. All right, so the first way that we're going to look at solving this problem is just by uh, looking at the basic relationships we have between all of these things. So in addition to saying this, we, we can also say that uh, omega is equal to delta theta over delta t. And we can say that alpha is equal to um, delta omega over delta t. And for those of you in calculus, um, you could say that omega is d theta over dt, and that alpha is uh, the rate of change of omega with respect to time. Either way. Um, those are all fine to do. The first, the first way that we're gonna, first way that we're gonna figure out how many turns we have, or to figure out our our, our radial quantity, is to say that okay, omega, according to this one, is our velocity divided by a radius. So that's ten meters per second divided by 0 0.5 meters, meters, and that leaves me with 20 blank over seconds. Now the thing that we're going to use as a blank is a radian. Radian is how we measure angle. You should all be familiar with that from Algebra 2 or Pre-Cal or I don't remember when you had it, but you should be familiar with it right now. And just to jog your memory, 2 pi radians is once around a circle or 360 degrees, just as a little conversion for us to hold on to. So now we have our omega as 20 radians per second. Our theta 
is going to be omega times time or 20 radians per second times two seconds second goes away and that leaves me with 40 radians that's one way to do it the other way we're going to do this is we're going to say okay the delta x that we found up there is 20 meters so our theta is going to be delta x I'm going to look at this x over r Uh, so that's going to be 20 meters divided by uh, 0.5 meters. And, and what we get there is, again, 40 and no unit. When we're doing rotational stuff and we come up with no unit, that means, oh, my pen is freaking out on me. That means 40 radians. So, either way we're looking at 40 radians. But in order to get to how many turns, we need to translate that. So, if I know that I have 2 pi radians in one turn, or if I say uh, 1 turn equals 2 pi radians, so we can do a conversion factor, and this is why it's important to know this right now. Our conversion factor would be that. Uh, 2 pi radians per one turn. So we're going to take 40 and divide it by 2 pi. And we get something close to 6.4 turns. This is just a, a quick way to look at how these things are related. We're going to look at a few more problems like this in class and definitely with your UT homework. Um, another thing that we're going to look at with this is because these all have the same relationships, we'll say, hmm, we'll look at the linear stuff over here and the rotational stuff. over here. All right, over here we have x and we have velocity is equal to the change in x over the change in time and we have acceleration is equal to uh, the change in velocity over the change in time um, and, and these relationships, how these things work together, where we got them from the graphs and for those of you in calculus from calculus, um, allowed us to do our kinematic equations. V equals V0 plus AT. Uh, v squared equals V0 squared plus 2A delta X. And delta X is equal to V0T plus 1 half AT squared. Because the relationships among the rotational quantities are so very similar to this, we have theta and then omega is change in theta, our angle over the change in time, and alpha is the change in omega over the change in time. It allows us to do kinematic equations for these rotational quantities, and we can say that omega is equal to omega zero plus, well, it's alpha times time, and then omega squared is equal to omega zero squared plus two alpha theta, and then theta, or our change in angular displacement, is equal to omega zero times time plus one half alpha times time squared. <clears throat> and what we can do is, is do the same kind of kinematic problems with this. Obviously, rotational quantities aren't going to go in two dimensions, so we're going to be looking at spinning objects, speeding up, and slowing down. Um, we'll do a few examples of this in class. And so I'll leave it at that.